Greetings, beloved, from the South Coast. I'm Thomas Manton IV. We're just here at the uh, beautiful seaside. You can see there, and uh, just having some conversation with some friends here, and we were telling a story about the difference between prosperity and poverty. Poverty can make someone a thief, and also like jealous and small-minded. But that's religious, you know, God doesn't want that. He wants us all to be expanded on the inside and have a prosperity mentality. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> some funny stories. I was talking about some preachers. I was having some prayer meetings and it was really glorious with the intercessors and people in our ministry. But then when I invited some pastors from other streams, they just couldn't handle the glory. <laughs> they couldn't handle. They couldn't handle the the blessing of God. Now, I'm think. I'm thinking about this black helicopter. Making noise. So you can see. I'm getting it there. I'm thinking about the story of Solomon. And the queen of Sheba, she was a queen and rich herself. So she was already a maid in that realm. And she was able to go and receive the higher level from Solomon. <coughs> because she was wise, you know, and had her own thing going on. But what if it was a religious preacher? <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, look at this, look at this. I've had people do that. Come to my house and see this, see something nice, and they, they can't even handle that. Though, well, you should see the next levels of what we're looking at. So, uh, funny story in Kenya. I had some uh, people over praying, and then I invited some preachers, and the preachers would say, "Oh, look at this place. Oh, how some people live." And I was like, "No, don't do that." Yeah, I was feeling my spirit was turning upside down. I was like, oh, no. And sure enough, the jealousy kicked in, and then they split, you know. And that kind of kills the, the thing right there. And then uh, another one came, and I was sitting. We had such a move of God in the great room in front of the fireplace. I had this big throne chair. It was like a leather, like a leather recliner, but really elegant, a special one. And uh, sat and talked about the office of the prophet and about, you know, wealth creation and all of that. And uh, God just uh, was moving and then some people just can't handle it, you know. But the people that did are blessed. I was, I was reminded today again about people that just are, are attracting wealth. Business people that connect with us, they're attracting wealth. They're, 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 they're getting blessed in new ways. Supernatural favors coming. Supernatural finance. There's a woman of God who's in another country, from another country, and now stationed in another country, who ran into huge amounts of minerals that I don't want to say the numbers because you might get scared. And one principle I've learned, especially I was talking about these quote-unquote pastors who can't handle any glory, but I... But, you know, God wanted to test them out. And my friend here asked, like, I wonder if that was good that that happened. I thought, yeah, it's good it happened from the outset that I didn't go further into covenant and relationship because I saw that the thing in them is anti the thing that's in me. I carry prosperity. I carry the anointing for blessing and wealth and wealth advancement, creation, super abundance and increase, you know. So if someone has an opposite of that, uh, where it's going to clash at some point. And if someone's jealous and they can't handle like others have, maybe they believe in the prosperity of God, but they're just jealous that someone else has it and they're at my house instead of us at their house, wherever that would be. So I had this beautiful estate with beautiful flowers, beautiful trees, all kinds of different colors. And we had guava trees, tree tomatoes, bananas, avocados... What else was there? Um, other kinds of fruits. I can't remember all of them. Oranges. I think even lemons. 
and the Lord, and, and Luquats. <laughs> and I remember the Luquats. So the Lord was waking me up very early in the morning. It's a funny story. <clears throat> and uh, I was getting up like 6 o'clock in the morning because there's an exotic kind of bird that makes a very loud noise. It's like freight trains appearing and they blow the horn. Oh, oh. And there was like 50 of them would come at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. You could set your watch by it. If you hear them coming, it's like 5.57 to like 6.02 or 6.03. They're right on time for the 6 o'clock moment to all be there making their noise. So I was already awake, so I decided to walk out, walk around a little bit, look at them in the back, and then walk to the front. And I, I came back in through the back, the kitchen downstairs, the great room upstairs, up the stairs and out the front main door. And all of a sudden, I hear this rustling in the trees. I was like, what's that? Lord, you woke me up to see monkeys. I wanted to see monkeys. I thought, maybe the monkeys have come to visit. And I keep hearing the noise. I look up. I don't see monkeys. I thought, hey, this is strange. And then I get closer. I look up and I see a pair of shoes. And then I see like a leg attached to the shoe. And then <laughs> the guard uniform attached to that, you know, the security guy. And they change shift at 6 a.m. They come 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then the evening, the 24-hour guard security at, at my gate. And, and then uh, the evening would be... 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So the 6 a.m. guy has come. And he said he was a Christian, had a big Bible. He used to sit by the gate reading his Bible. But then I found out from the other staff that he was gossiping about people. Jealous of us and things we're doing and have. And so I'll tell you what happened to him in a minute. And I was just about to get to the punchline with my dear friends here. And I, I decided to... Turn this on so I could also share the story with you while it's flowing. And uh, <laughs> so all of a sudden I hear, I see like, uh, he has two bags, three, like four bags. Like this plastic bag you hear rustling. My friend here has one. From the Cuban, from the Cuban restaurant, Havana. So uh, <laughs> we're down here on the beach. So the... Uh, And the bags are getting fuller and fuller, you know? And I'm seeing they're expanding because he's way up in the tree, way up high. And then he starts to take the step down. And I thought, okay, so the, I said, Lord, what, you know, what do you want me to do? Do I confront this guy? The Lord says, no, just go in the house. So I went and closed the door very quietly. I turned the handle, pushed it closed, and then put it back slow so, you know, it wouldn't uh, make any noise. So that, he came at 6 a.m. So the whole day I didn't say anything. I thought, I'll just wait till it's time for him to go and then I'll announce the good news that he could go on his merry way and keep the fruit as my parting gift and maybe some severance pay and whatever his salary was and don't come again, thank you very much. I called the security company. I said, uh, you need to get a replacement for us for tomorrow. And they're like, what's the problem? I said, I don't want to discuss it, just do it. Have somebody here in the morning, a new person that you trust. And that was the last day for that guy. I asked the Lord what he said about him. He said, he's a, he's a Bible-thumping, lying, conniving thief. And I, that's what the Lord said. I said, you, I said, what's he reading the Bible for? What's he going to get out of it if he's a thief? <laughs> and... Uh, but he had some nice sweet fruits that I really enjoyed. He took them. I said, let him just take them. And I guess that was his, uh, his prize. So you got to be careful about what you want in life. Esau sold himself for a pot of vegetables, lentils or whatever it was. That's stupid. And Judas for 30 pieces of silver, which he threw back on the floor anyway. And that wasn't going to benefit him. But he was also a thief. And Esau was uh, a very messed up guy. Jacob and Esau, because Jacob tricked him out of the blessing. So, prosperity is something that God has ordained. Uh, I'm going to do a teaching in the next couple of days. I, I'll have the right moment when the Lord releases me to do it. About capitalism and free trade. 
<coughs> and I'll say God is on that side. He's not on the other side of other things. Have all, you know, he wants people, he wants to bless people in business and to be successful. But you got to do it the right way. Also, I want to begin to speak in, in coming days about uh, uh, some supernatural experiences I had because everything that we want, God has it. And it's in the spirit world. And the closer we get into his presence, the more we're going to have. Another thing, you have to test your connections to see what's really in them. Are they really? Wow. Oh, birds are flying over my head here. And if they're, you know, real. I've had many people to be tested like that. That something else comes out of them that you weren't bargaining for. Because things, th things seemed right. Seemingly so on the outside it seemed good. But on the inside there wasn't anything good. So you want to know what's in somebody. Also, next point, your hunger and thirst for God will get you filled. I know it says righteousness, but that's a... <coughs> I don't have time here, standing in this interim moment here on the beach to... in the hot sun here to explain all this, but I can do a lot of teaching on that. Righteousness, what is it? In right standing, standing in the right place, being in the right place at the right time, and also executing godly things in the earth. You know what I mean? That, the righteous thing, and the position that we have in salvation, and our walk with the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a very deep topic and a a lengthy thing to teach on, and we will do that, of course, but hunger and thirst will get you filled. Because when you're thirsty, you're going to drink something. When you're hungry, you're going to eat something. And, it, and here's the thing. I was talking about this. I was thinking about this earlier today. I was talking about it earlier. The, the thing that you want is in God's hand. So what you want to do is get closer to Him. You want to get closer to Him. You want to live in an elegant place, God has it for you. You want to drive a beautiful car, God has it for you. You want a great environment, you want great friends, you want connections, you want his favor, he has it for you. It's not a problem for him, he created everything. Look at the beautiful things he's created. On my Facebook page alone, there are many posts about showing the beautiful creations, all kinds of exotic creatures and animals, some we've never seen before. When I see the colors and I see the pictures of them, I love to post that so people can just look at the splendor and beauty that God has created. So know that everything you want is in His hand. What you want to do is get closer to Him. And He's no respecter of persons. So it's not like certain people get it and certain people don't. That's nonsense. It was like Calvinism that was talking about that. Some are predestined for salvation. Some can never be saved, so don't pray for them. And then once you've been elected and chosen to have it, then you have it forever. you got to have it because you're one of the ransomed one. He took that scripture and took it out of context. He's a ransom for many, but for many, not for everybody. Well, because you know why it says for many? I could, if you use a little common sense, you could also see that not everybody's going to choose to pay the price or to connect. That's why it's for many. It's not that God ordained it that way. We can refute that, that is it, if it's Calvinistic, we can refute that by saying, God wants no one to be lost. He wants all to come to repentance and to the knowledge of Him. So you need to consecrate your life back to God. You need to give yourself to Him. You need to confess Him as your Savior. You need to receive Him in your heart. If you want to do that now, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Savior. And of course, we could pray a lot of longer prayers. Or you get in touch with us, so keep stay connected. I'll explain a lot more things in future days. But <clears throat> just just connect with him by calling calling unto him and receiving him, and asking the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me. Devil, get away from me. Jesus is my Lord, and the blood of Jesus is over me, so the devil can have no place in my life. And God's will for you is prosperity. I pray that becomes like an epiphany. And a revelation for you like it has for me. He wants you to live in the best, have the best. See, some people can look at you and think you're like a favored child, but favor isn't fair. Favor is done by things you do to, to get it, your connection with God and things you do with God. And favor is 95% of your prosperity begins with favor. And what, who you pleasure who you serve, who you connect with, who you solve problems for, what you do, and especially in the, in the presence of God and what you do for Him, 
causes favor to be released and that's where your prosperity begins and that's how it flows so stop thinking that it's just for a chosen select few look at them they're blessed look at that one he has this and he has that look at her she has this and she has that you can have it too but you have, it starts with the revelation that God has it for you and he does so more later I love you I'm praying for you Isaiah 48 17 the famous words of the prophet said I'm the Lord your God who teaches you the prophet and I'm the prophet who's speaking about the prophet for you and he'll lead you in the way that you should go and God's will is that you live in abundance walk in abundance have abundance and he wants to bless you so stop lying stop cheating stop stealing stop thinking you're getting something when you get something that's stolen or free or wrong do things the right way but get in the presence of God because all the wealth that you want he has it and you can get it from him when you connect with him much more deeply I'll be sharing more later the Lord bless you I love you praying for you thank you for being my partner you can do that on thomasmanton.com people in Kenya can write me on my M-Pesa number and my friends will put it on the screen here and the website is thomasmanton.com you can also use that to sow seed in Jesus name live from the beach love you talk to you again very soon in Jesus name thank you Lord amen